Welcome to this new episode of The Context. Today I want to talk to you about how we build our shared reality. Because I believe something amazing is happening. We are in the process of designing and deploying the tools that enable us to completely change how we define reality and we are augmenting what we used to call reality and extending the limits of the possible. Think about it. The physical reality around you used to be your village, maybe 20 kilometers in radius, 30 years in time scale between when you were born and when you died, based Uh, on your practical experience learned from your parents uh, based on oral history uh, of uh, wisdom and knowledge uh, extending through generations and little or no theoretical and scientific understanding of actually why you were doing things and, and where things were going. Today's reality is augmented and extended already through science and technology. In a time scale, we are embracing the 13.8 billion years uh, since uh, the Big Bang, and we are observing it through our telescopes and decoding the meaning of cosmic phenomena. Uh, in in uh, in radius, uh, it is uh, billions of uh, light years and uh, billions of galaxies, trillions of of suns, and uh, in our own Milky Way, thousands of uh, systems where we know planets are orbiting around the stars, and we are increasing our understanding of how these planets are. And on Earth itself, uh, our uh, reality is based on sound, scientific understanding, theoretical and experimental basis of uh, what we do in terms of how we manage our education, our health, uh, how we plan ahead uh, for our life, uh, what are the safeguards that society builds uh, around us. And of course, uh, this uh, reality is subject to re-evaluation. In terms of how the world uh, is, we, um, for uh, little more than a hundred years ago, until that time, um, didn't know there existed objects outside of our galaxy, that the universe was so big uh, as what we understand it to be today. And for sure, uh, as we try and explore the implications of uh, the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, uh, where we would be talking about uh, the multiverse, or as we uh, may start to hypothesize that um, fluctuations in the quantum foam uh, yield big bangs, expanding into new universes, uh, uh, which uh, would uh, bring us uh, to an understanding of what could be called the uh, megaverse. But also, we are building new fundamental components of our reality in the digital domain. And this is, of course, the metaverse. And when we are talking about digital worlds, our online activities, I am very keen not calling them virtual. These are on par with our physical reality. Their importance, their implications, the way that they influence the world is not inferior. It is not uh, in in a way different from how the physical reality influences the world uh, and what the implications of of physical uh, reality are. So, 
an increasing share of our lives is uh, digital and an increasing share of what matters in the world around us is based on the understanding that the digital world, the metaverse, uh, is supporting our ability to design, implement, and live lives that fulfill the ambitions of the 21st century. This comes from very simple, apparently, but in reality very complex, components of the digital domain as supply chains that make sure that our supermarkets are filled with food or that uh, the economic transactions uh, and the financial systems uh, are chugging along with the rhythms and the reliability that, uh, that are needed. The digital domain defines uh, our health when more and more diagnostic systems display an image that is either directly interpreted by an artificial uh, intelligence-based diagnostic system which supplies the diagnosis to a medical professional confirming it, or at least, very often these days, even if the diagnosis is unaided, the doctor making, the specialist making the, uh, the, the reading of the digital image is non-local. He or she can be anywhere in the world providing the expertise needed to maximize the likelihood of a positive outcome. Now with uh, solar energy and the necessarily more advanced integration of renewable energy sources, this part of our lives is becoming digital as well. How energy is produced and consumed and shifted uh, and shuttled across um, smart grids uh, in order to be uh, deployed where it is needed at the most efficient uh, and uh, convenient way possible couldn't happen without sophisticated digital systems. I often make uh, a list of uh, these components across what uh, in the vision of network society we call the eight pillars. Energy, manufacturing, food, health, learning, finance, security, and policymaking. And without going through each of these, because we would need too much time, and I like to keep uh, the episodes of the context a little more compact, it could be possible to bring up very clear examples of how the digital domain, the metaverse, makes possible each of these pillars to be designed, implemented, and delivered to the levels of performance that we expect. So, as our lives are digital, our reality is digital. It is very natural for us to understand that what we see whether it is directly a physical object or what we see in a hyper-realistic, ultra-high-definition screen is the same. Or maybe sometimes seeing things on the screen is superior. When uh, tourists come and visit uh, uh, Milan in Italy uh, and they ask... Uh, for some advice, I definitely tell them, yes, absolutely go see the Duomo, go see the Last Supper, uh, go see all these beautiful things. But be prepared. The spirit of the place is fundamental. You will not forget the journey uh, and uh, visiting the church where Leonardo painted this beautiful fresco. But actually, 
the Japanese documentary telling about uh, The Last uh, Supper is superior if you are watching it on a 70-inch uh, ultra-high-definition television set than not going there in reality, where it is far away, you can't see it well, it is not lit, uh, and uh, and you don't understand the details. And, and we could find many other examples like this. There is one fundamental difference between the physical reality and the digital reality of the metaverse. In the first, we have very little influence in defining that reality. And changing it is hard work. It takes a lot of time. Physical infrastructure building is important as the Chinese um, high-speed trains uh, are showing us. And it will be hard to match their passion and their dedication in building this fundamentally important transportation infrastructure. But when we go into the digital domain, changing our reality is much easier. What does that mean? It means that what information we share, what information we perceive, and what is the consensus that, that emerges from that information sharing and, and that perception will change our understanding of the digital reality. Necessarily, we live in a filter bubble. Even if we complain about it because we understand that our perception is incomplete. But just as it is necessarily incomplete in the physical world, even though the possibility of a broader and deeper perception is there in the digital world, that doesn't mean that it is a good thing, that it would be a good thing. The simplest example of how the filter bubble exists is in Facebook's choice of what particular posts from your contacts to show you as you scroll through the wall of your uh, various uh, pieces of information on your phone or on the browser. This means that you don't see all of the posts of all of your contacts or all the page updates of pages that you have liked in the past, let alone people that Facebook might suggest to you or pages that may be something that you would want to like. It would be impossible to see them all. The tools that allow you to see the right quotation marks subset is a set of tools that you can fine-tune. Each like on the page or each time you hide a post with the X in the upper right corner in today's interfaces, you are training Facebook's algorithm to shape the filter bubble to your expectations and to prepare a given perception of the digital domain, the metaverse, in this reality that we are building together. And of course, these tools are evolving. We are getting better at using them, and the tools themselves are getting better at perceiving our feedback, at expressing nuanced understanding. Once again, to use a simple example, if in the past the only feedback available with a simple gesture on Facebook was the like, today many of you started using what has been introduced some time ago of a different set of options, not simply like but also 
uh, being surprised, uh, uh, being uh, passionately uh, in, in love with the post, being angry, being sad. It can be fully expected that in the future, nuanced feedback is going to enable each of us to update and shape and better share a nuanced understanding of this digital reality with each other. The way we manipulate the parameters of the digital world, augmented and enhanced by the tools that we have available, is what gives rise to fake news. These tools are very powerful and they are used to influence our perception of the shared reality. And they are a great opportunity, a stimulation to develop a healthy skepticism as we go ahead and perceive reality through digital tools. Double-checking the source, the motivation, the consistency of a message. Understanding whether we have become inadvertently uh, subjected and, and made into a robot spreading what is a modern version of a chain letter. Every time you find a message that says XYZ, doesn't matter, make sure you let everybody know, this should trigger your reflex to check whether the message itself matters or it is just a very infective idea that wants to be spread. However, we have some very good safeguards. Philip K. Dick used to say, reality is that which, when you stop believing in it, doesn't go away. And this is very advantageous. When we connect the digital realm with the physical one, that is when the reality check allows us to see if through manipulation because of filter bubbles being distorted in the perception of the digital reality, we have strayed too far. So, the more frequent these connections between the digital domain and the physical reality are, the better. I can guarantee that the exploration of how we build and come to a consensus around a shared digital reality has just become. A very recent news is the development of what can be called digital telepathy, direct brain-to-brain communications between two humans. And if this today is a very basic experiment, within the course of a few years, it is going to become ubiquitous, powerful, taken for granted by people growing up with a native ability to handle those tools. So our introspection and our awareness must continue to be honed to take advantage of those tools, to keep building and pushing the boundaries of what is possible with healthy skepticism, but also enthusiasm towards the progress that we are making and building incredibly uplifting and powerful new realities. 
So thank you for watching this episode of The Context. Thank you for supporting it on Patreon and allowing me to produce new episodes together with my team. See you next week.